Seasons and the flowers that mark them are a constant source of inspiration to art across and between cultures. Plants in art may be read directly as symbols, tend a cultivated illusion, or reveal histories of contact and exchange. As graceful wisteria garlands wash island's walls in lilac, and spiked buds of iris begin to unfold, today I would like to offer a short exploration of these two flowers in Japanese art. Employed as a seasonal and emotional shorthand in poetry, art and fashion since the Heian era, which stretched from 794 to 1185 AD, both wisteria and iris enjoy long histories of appreciation in Japan. Wisteria, or Fuji in Japanese, is the subject of 27 poems in Japan's oldest poetry collection, the Manyo Shu, completed in the 8th century. Wisteria's colour, fragrance and flowers are associated with late spring, Growing as a vine, wisteria was also paired with the pine tree, which it could use as a support, and its generous blooms were perceived as more sustained than those of the fleeting cherry. Written by court lady Murasaki Shikibu in the early 11th century, the literary masterpiece Tale of Genji includes a chapter called Wisteria Leaves. In this chapter, a concert held in honour of wisteria provides a space for reconciliation between the noble Tono Chujo and Genji's son, Yugiri. Long in love with Tono Chujo's daughter, the steadfast Yugiri is compared to the pine upon which the delicate wisteria can flourish. As Tono Chujo tenders his consent to his daughter's betrothal, Yugiri is offered a branch of wisteria flowers, the pine and wisteria at last to be united. While the wisteria vine and other tree flowers, cherry, plum, mandarin orange, were enjoyed in private aristocratic compounds during the Heian era, the setting for many a moonlit tryst, from the 17th century, as urban populations expanded, these plants were more often enjoyed as part of the public recreation and spectacle that constituted the famous place, or Meisho. One of the most famous sites for wisteria viewing in the city of Edo, modern Tokyo, was and remains the shrine of Kameido Tenjin. In this iconic print by Utagawa Hiroshige, the hanging wisteria flowers elegantly framed the shrine's distinctive drum-shaped bridge. Temple precincts were home to many celebrated trees, and some of the specimens of Japanese wisteria gathered by curious European botanists in the 19th century came from these same prestigious locales. Now gracing many European gardens, wisteria's elegant arbors can still be enjoyed at sites across Japan. Japan is home to a number of species of iris, in particular the water-loving kakitsubata, iris levigata, and the hanashobu, iris ensata which is also quite partial to water, though not to the same degree as the kakitsubata. Their striking forms have long made them a popular choice for flower arrangements. During the horticultural boom of Japan's Edo period, which lasted from around 1603 to 1868, the Hanashobu iris was the subject of extensive cultivation, display and competition, and so often makes an appearance in prints and printed books. The most iconic use of the iris in art, however, is the Kakitsubata iris in the Tales of Ise. This 10th century literary masterwork combines verse and prose to narrate the romantic and poetic exploits of its protagonist, understood to represent the courtier, Ariwara no Narihira, who lived from 825 to 880. During the ninth episode of the Tales, Departing for the East, the poet stops at Yatsuhashi in Mikawa province, where rustic plank bridges cross the marshy terrain. Challenged to compose a poem, he is struck by the beauty of the flowering irises and recalls the love he has left behind. Read in Japanese, the first syllable of each line forms the word kakitsubata, or iris. Karagoromo, kitsuzu nare ni shi, tsumashi areba, harubaru kinuru, tabi o shizo omo. Island-born and long-term Tokyo resident, poet and artist Peter Macmillan recreated this acrostic form in his English translation. In these familiar robes I am reminded of the beloved wife. I have left behind, stretching far, sadness, the hem of journeys. Among numerous examples of art, literature and craft, the irises that so moved the resting poet have since been captured in Japan's earliest printed storybook, as well as gracing dramatic painted screens by artist Ogata Korin. This influence is extended beyond Japan also. A printed reproduction of one of Corin's screens in a book may even have caught the attention of a struggling Dutch artist painting in a San Remi asylum, while the no play Iris, or Kakitsubata, is thought to have influenced Joyce's Finnegan's Wake, 
by way of the writings of Ezra Pound and Ernest Fenelosa. While I have yet to enjoy the iris gardens in Japan, this year I can enjoy my own bearded iris, Iris Germanica, which after many trials and tribulations is offering up its first flowers since moving to Ireland five years ago. <laughs>